It's that time of year again. Today is Ubuntu release day, and today marks a very special event because this marks the release of Ubuntu 2204, which of course is a LTS release of Ubuntu, meaning it's a long-term support release. The LTS versions of Ubuntu only come out every two years, so this is a big event, and I would say probably more than 90% of Ubuntu desktop users use Ubuntu LTS releases. So I'm very excited today to take a look at the new version 2204 codename Jammy Jellyfish. So I have spun up a virtual machine here and I'm going to go ahead and run through a quick installation of Ubuntu 2204 and the very first screen you get in the installer of course is language. English is the default and that's okay for me so I'll click continue. And then English US for the keyboard layout is selected. That is what I use, so I'll click continue. And then update and other software. What apps would you like to install to start with? I want the normal installation or do I want the minimal installation? The minimal installation will come with a web browser and a few basic system utilities, but it won't come with all the extra goodies like games and office software and stuff like that. I'm gonna do the normal installation because I wanna see everything that gets installed with the normal installation and then download updates while installing Ubuntu. I'm going to leave that ticked on. It's ticked on by default. Install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi drivers and uh, multimedia formats. That's going to be your uh, multimedia codecs. You're going to need to turn that on. I know it's uh, ticked off by default, but to have a proper desktop experience, you really need to check that box and then click continue. And then we get to the installation type. It wants to know what we're going to do with the disk. Do we want to erase the entire disk and give the whole disk to Ubuntu? And that's fine in this virtual machine. Or do I want to choose something else? Now, something else would be important if you needed to manually partition your drives or if you were dual booting alongside another operating system. Maybe you want to go ahead and do the partitioning yourself. In my case, since there's only one virtual hard drive in this virtual machine. I'm going to choose the first option and just let Ubuntu have the whole drive. And then I'm going to click install now. And then we get a summary of the uh, partition scheme that it's going to create. Everything looks good. I'm going to click continue. Then it wants to know about the time zone. It looks like it has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me. So I'll click continue on that. And then we need to create our username. My username on this computer will be DT. We need to choose a uh, host name for the computer. I'll call this Ubuntu Vert, uh, just so it has a descriptive name in case I ever SSH into this machine. I know exactly which machine I'm actually working on. And then we need to create a strong and complicated password for our DT user. And then we need to confirm that strong and complicated password. And then do we want to log in automatically? No, the reason I created a password is to require my password to log in for privacy reasons, right? You don't want just anybody to be able to get into your computer without a password. So I'm going to leave that, which is the default, require my password to log in. Then we have a box, use Active Directory. I don't use Active Directory. I really don't know anything about it. So I'm going to leave that ticked off by default as well. Then I'm going to click Continue. And then this portion of the installation usually takes about 10 minutes on my hardware. You can watch the little slideshow here. If you click the arrows, you can read a little bit about Ubuntu if you don't know too much about it. Other than that, I'll be back in about 10 minutes once the installation has completed. And the installation has completed. That installation took oh, about five or six minutes. Now I could click continue testing if I still want to play around in the live environment here, or I could restart now and actually get into our properly installed Ubuntu 2204. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to choose restart now. I like the uh, new redesigned Ubuntu logo. That's really nice. So let's go ahead and log in to GNOME here. By the way, this is going to be the uh, new uh, GNOME 42 desktop. So our user, of course, is DT, and we created a strong and complicated password for DT. And that is interesting. So either I forgot my strong and complicated password, or it's just not going to let me in. I think what the problem here is that I'm in a virtual machine and let me move my head. If I go down here to the little cog wheel and choose settings, you see you have two choices, Ubuntu and Ubuntu on Xorg. By default, Ubuntu 2204 with the GNOME desktop environment, it's going to use Wayland as a display server. And I bet the Wayland display server is causing me an issue here in this VM. So let me switch over to Xorg and try to log in. And now I get a black screen. But it does let me into the uh, 
the desktop environment. It just takes a second to uh, launch the desktop environment, especially the very first time you log in. Let me go ahead and change the display settings. So on real hardware, that's probably not an issue. Wayland is probably going to be okay for you, but in this VM, the uh, video drivers I have set up for this virtual machine, uh, I guess they just can't handle Wayland all that well. So let me get a proper 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. For those of you wondering about the video driver I was using in the virtual machine, I was using the Vert IO video driver. So if you're trying this out inside a virtual machine and you're wondering why you can't log into that Wayland session, um, maybe either use the Xorg session like I did or maybe uh, change video drivers. I could have tried the uh, QXL video driver or one of the other various video drivers available inside Vert Manager. Now, of course, when you log in the very first time, you get this little welcome screen that will connect your online account, your Ubuntu single sign-on account if you have one, your Google account, your Nextcloud, your Microsoft account. I don't have any of this stuff. Well, I do have a Nextcloud, but I'm not going to sign into it on this video, so I'm going to skip all of this. And the next screen, help improve Ubuntu. Ubuntu can report information that helps developers improve it. So basically, do you want to send reports, telemetry, back to Canonical to help them improve Ubuntu? So crash reports, basically. And I typically would leave this ticked on as yes, send system info to Canonical. If for some reason you don't want to do that, you could tick it off and with no here. But I think it's important to actually let developers of software have crash reports because it does help them improve the product. So I'll leave that ticked on. The next screen is privacy. Do we want to allow certain applications to determine our geographical location? It's ticked off by default. I will leave that ticked off by default. I don't want to share any kind of uh, geolocation information with anyone. So you're ready to go. You can use software to install apps like this stuff. So uh, especially a lot of this some of it's free and open source software, a lot of it's proprietary software that's not typically found in the uh, Debian repositories, the Ubuntu repositories with the apt package manager. So some of this stuff like uh, Spotify and you know Discord and Slack, these are proprietary applications. I'm assuming they would install via snap packages if I wanted to install them. I'm going to go ahead and decline that for now. I'm going to click done. I've got an icon out of place here, this icon was uh, moved when I resized the screen resolution. That's why it's in the center of the screen because we had that really small screen resolution and then when I blew it up to 1920 by 1080 the icon uh, was out of place. One thing I will say is that might be the best looking Ubuntu wallpaper I've seen in many many years. That jellyfish, the abstract art jellyfish, is a sexy wallpaper. Now that might be the best Ubuntu wallpaper ever other than the fact that Ubuntu 804, right, an LTS from many Many, many years ago, Ubuntu 804 Hardy Heron had the bird, the heron, and that was back in the old uh, brown and orange wallpaper days, and that bird looked amazing. If you guys have never seen the Ubuntu Hardy Heron wallpaper, check that out. But this jammy jellyfish is a close second, I think. So let me go ahead and click on the file manager. One thing to notice uh, about this particular edition of Ubuntu compared to the previous releases is we have a light theme by default. And by light theme, I mean it's actually a really light theme, right? There, the previous version of the Yaru theme in the last version of Ubuntu I took a look at had a mixed theme, meaning it was a light theme, meaning the window itself was light, but the title bar, you know, this information up here, had a dark bar. And I kind of like the mixed theme. I'll be honest, I like that a little bit better than the all light theme. But either one, I mean, honestly, it looks good either way. Now, we can change to a fully dark theme that is available. If I go down here to the Applications menu and look for Settings, and I go to Appearance. And now we have two choices, light and dark for style. And if we choose dark, it will change. And now when I open the file manager here, you can see now we have this fully dark theme. And that is a sexy dark theme. I mean, really everything about Ubuntu here in the last few releases is a very clean, polished look. This uh, icon set they use is very, very nice. I love the, the dark Yaru GTK theme as well. And back to the settings menu, you can change the accent colors. By default, they're using orange, but if I wanted to, I could change the accent colors to uh, green or blue or, you know, whatever. If I want to change icon sets and wallpapers to, you know, blue or green, you know, I can change the accents to match that as well. But because we're using uh, purplish icons and Actually, the icons, I just noticed that. The icons, they have accent colors. Wow, 
I'm assuming it's an entirely different icon set based on uh, each color when I choose. I'm not exactly sure how they're accomplishing all of that, but that is really slick. This uh, pink aubergine color here. Yeah, that is, that's not bad. Like, I am really impressed with how well themed this version of Ubuntu is. This, again, it may be one of the best looking Ubuntus that I've seen in many years. Taking a look at the top panel here, the uh, top bar here of the GNOME shell, we have our activities overview here in the center. Of course, we have our calendar and notifications. And some of this has been tweaked a little bit. I was reading the release announcement and the GNOME team has made us a lot of this stuff a little bit more compact, a little smaller, because I remember this calendar used to be quite a bit bigger. When you uh, would click on the calendar, it would take up like two-thirds of the screen right then they've made it slightly smaller i believe they've also made uh, some of the system tray widgets over here slightly smaller as well and in the power off session menu here if i go to power off we actually have a restart option now which has not been a thing for very long <laughs> so uh, for many years and i don't know why this was the case gnome uh, for whatever reason refused to put a restart option <laughs> in the menu here, even though that's one of the most common things that Linux users do, especially Linux users that tweak their system a lot. Uh, many times you'll change something on your system that requires a restart. And before what you would have to do is you would have to go into the menu system, hit the power off log out menu and log out to get back into the login manager where you typically sign in. And in the login manager, you had an option to restart. But why, why not just put that button there? You know, why make me jump through a couple of hoops to restart the system? Another thing that was annoying to many users for a long time was uh, not having the ability to put icons on the desktop. Now, Ubuntu had tweaked this for a while. Now, they've had the ability to actually put icons on the GNOME desktop. But for a while, you could not actually drag and drop icons from the file manager. For example, let me get into the Nautilus file manager if I wanted to uh, put something on the desktop, maybe the downloads folder, maybe drag that there. Now that actually works. That was not a thing before Ubuntu 22.04. Now I don't actually want my, uh, if I go into the desktop folder, you'll see I actually moved downloads to desktop because that's what this is representing here. I actually do not want the uh, desktop folder in that. Uh, these are clickable by the way. So now this path is fully clickable. Yeah, and then let me move that back. And you see when I do a copy and paste here, so I uh, cut downloads from the desktop directory and pasted it back in the home directory. And you can see that was represented here on the desktop as well. It took it off the, uh, the desktop. One of the more controversial things about this release of Ubuntu is Firefox is a snap package. So let me click Firefox. That actually launched rather quickly here. And let me make that full screen. So the speed wasn't too bad which I don't think I, I had a problem with the speed last time. Last time I tried Firefox as a snap, it was just uh, buggy. There were things that broke. Uh, I can't remember what the problem was on the last uh, Ubuntu release, but there was I had serious issues with that version of Firefox as a snap. But uh, I don't think the speed was the issue, and because everything did launch correctly, I go through the menu system. You know, everything everything looks like it's you know functioning. I add a new tab. It all looks like it's working. Of course, a lot of those bugs from the last release of Ubuntu have probably been worked out by now because that's the point of the interim releases is those are really kind of like beta tests for the LTS release. So I'm assuming they've got all the kinks worked out of the Firefox as a snap. Now, if you didn't want Firefox as a snap, one of the, again, controversial things about this is I can't open a terminal and do a sudo apt install Firefox because there's no... Debian package available for Firefox through the apt package manager in Ubuntu. So if you didn't want the snap version of Firefox, you would have to go manually grab a Debian package from Mozilla. I'm assuming they offer one. I'm sure they do. They offer packages for many different package managers out there. Or if you prefer, you could try Firefox as a flat pack. You could try Firefox as an app image. Uh, for me though, as long as the snap package works, I would just keep using the snap package plus the snap pack auto updates, which is important for a web browser because for security reasons, you want your web browser to always be up to date. And you don't have to worry about that with snaps because they auto update. Now, let me get back into the settings menu. So let me open the app launcher, go to settings or just type settings here. 
And let me get back into appearance here. We have desktop icons. Of course, I could turn the desktop icons off. I've mentioned on previous videos, I typically just turn the desktop icons off. I don't need to see them. We have various dock settings, and some of these were here in previous releases. Some of these weren't. We have the auto hide the dock, which is turned off by default, but I don't mind it auto hiding, um, but I'll leave it turned off for now. We have panel mode, which I don't believe was here before. Panel mode is turned on, meaning take up the entire length of the screen here. So if it's on the side, take up the entire height of the screen. But if I turn that off, now it becomes more of a dock, like your traditional GNOME dash to dock extension. So that could be cool for some people that prefer the dock look. I actually prefer the panel look because, I mean, <laughs> If you have something full screen, it looks kind of weird to have these gaps here. Nothing's really going to go in those gaps anyway. So just for aesthetic reasons, I would probably just keep that full screen. Now, I don't need a 48 pixel size icon. I would, you know, drastically reduce that to, you know, something like about 30 pixels, especially if I add a whole bunch of stuff to my uh, panel. Now we could also change the orientation of, uh, or the position on the screen right now. It's to the left, which honestly makes a lot of sense. But if you prefer, you could put it on the bottom. Now I don't like doing bottom panels and bottom docks because honestly, all of your buttons and your controls for your windows, all the programs you use, everything happens at the top and typically the top left. This is where your mouse is all the time. So it doesn't make sense to for most of your stuff to be doing stuff with the mouse up here and then having to come down here and click and then go back to the top where everything else is happening and then come back down here. You know, it's just a lot of mouse travel. It's it will cause you some wrist pain if you use your mouse all the time. So actually for, it's not just for aesthetics that Canonical and the Ubuntu team puts that dock on the left and the top left. It's just because that makes a lot of sense. You're already right here anyway. So you, your mouse barely has to travel. Like if you have a full screen web browser, your back buttons and the URL bar and all that's right here. And then your dock is right here, right? Don't put that at the bottom. Now there, you could also put it on the right. I have no idea why anyone would ever put a dock on the right side of the screen. Let me go ahead and take a look at the applications that are installed out of the box here on Ubuntu. Just quickly taking a look through the uh, app launcher here. We have our additional drivers tool. That's to get your proprietary drivers, especially your proprietary Wi-Fi drivers, proprietary video drivers. That's very important. You have All Riot Solitaire. That's a game, of course. And we have our calendar application, language support. LibreOffice is here. We have videos. And so that's our uh, GNOME video player. Now that is interesting. Uh, they're not alphabetically uh, sorted here, which I thought they were alphabetically sorted in previous versions. Oh, we can move them now. Now, this was not a thing in previous versions of GNOME and previous versions of, uh, of Ubuntu. So we can actually move these launchers around. That's very nice because honestly, you probably want to put the launchers for the programs you use all the time toward the top of this menu and maybe like on the second screen, you know, move everything that you don't really use. And the second screen yeah, I, I kind of animations are rather quick and, and peppy. Yeah, this looks good. We have our text editor, which of course is G edit, uh, although the, I don't think they call it G edit anymore. Uh, it was this G edit 41.0, but the GNOME team typically like, just label things text editor. Now that's why in the menu system, all you get is text editor rather than the name of the actual program. By the way, the uh, text editor G edit 41.0, you'll notice a mix of things here because uh, Ubuntu LTS, there will be some older versions of some programs. So it's GNOME 42, but not all of the GNOME suite of applications. Uh, not all of those particular programs will be on version 42. You'll see some 41s and you may see some older stuff as well. We have the GNOME terminal here. Let's open the terminal because we should check some stuff out. The very first thing we should check out is the kernel version. So we're going to be on 5.15. That's very important. So if you install this, the LTS release of Ubuntu, you're not going to get any uh, kernel upgrades, right? So you will occasionally get security updates, a patched version of 5.15, but you will run the 5.15 series of the kernel for the next two or four years, however long you run the Ubuntu LTS. I believe the uh, LTS versions of Ubuntu now are supported for five years. Actually, I think for some cases they have now extended the LTS support life for 
up to 10 years, I think, for enterprise customers. Uh, that's probably much longer than most people will, will want to run an LTS release. What I recommend is since the new LTS comes out every two years, April every two years, run 2204 until April of 2024 and then upgrade to 2404, the next LTS and yada, yada, yada. So just plan on upgrading every two years. And of course, Ubuntu makes upgrading very easy. There's an upgrade tool. It'll pop up every two years letting you know, hey, we're on a new LTS. Do you want to upgrade? And then, of course, just take the upgrade path. Now, let's see how many applications are actually installed on the system. So I'm going to do an apt list dash dash installed and it spits out every application that is installed line by line. Of course, these are packages that are installed with the apt package manager. Now, if I take that, because every package is its own separate line, I could take that information and pipe that into WC-L. WC is the word count program. Dash L means give me a line count. So there were 1,704 lines in that output, meaning there were 1,704 packages installed on the system. Now, of course, those are packages installed with the apt package manager. What was installed as a snap? Let's do a snap list. So it looks like there are some snaps installed. So let me decrease the font size just so we can see what is installed here. And it looks like we don't really have much installed as a snap by default. I mean, we have some of the basic stuff. I mean, we have the snap D daemon, of course. We have the core snap. We have the GNOME libraries that are needed and the core uh, GTK themes. But really, the only packages that are installed as a snap are Firefox and the snap store as a snap. So uh, that people that complain that Ubuntu is forcing snaps on people really they're, they're really forcing Firefox on you. And it's not even Ubuntu that is making that Firefox decision. Many people are confused about this. The Ubuntu team did not take Firefox and make it a snap and, you know, take away the dev pack. That was uh, Mozilla's decision. That was Firefox's decision. They wanted to just package it as a snap because it's auto updating and it provides them an easy way to just package it one time for Ubuntu. So again, uh, don't throw shade on Canonical or the Ubuntu team for the Firefox decision. Again, that really wasn't their decision. That's Mozilla's decision. If you want to complain to somebody about it, go tell the Mozilla team about it. One of the new things with this edition of Ubuntu is you will have a new screenshot application. I'm assuming that's uh, from the GNOME upstream. If I do screenshot, yeah, take a screenshot. Yeah, you see this new uh, GNOME screenshot utility. It's almost like FlameShot, right? With the way you can just you know, select a region and, you know, take a selection, uh, or you can just take a picture of the whole screen, or you can do a specific application window. So it's very FlameShot-like. Uh, I, I was fine with the previous version of the GNOME screenshot utility. It was rather simple, but I mean, most people just need a simple utility, but that's fine too. I, I actually don't mind them improving the screenshot tool a little bit. I do think Flameshot has definitely upped the game as far as screenshot utilities. So I think a lot of the other screenshot applications like Gnome's uh, screenshot tool and KDE's spectacle and things like that. I think a lot of those applications do have a little catching up to do. One other thing that I read in the release announcements is let me open up the file manager here. I'm going to right click and I was going to create a new document. And I no longer right click and create a new file. Maybe I have to go in the menu system. Uh, where do I? Oh, that just rearranges that stuff. How do I create a new document? I can create a new folder, but am I just missing something here? What are we doing? Maybe it's one of these. That is, and that's a new window. <laughs> what is this? A new tab? Yeah, new tab. And this is. A new folder am, am I just a complete idiot or maybe <laughs> when did they take away the ability to actually just create an empty file here in Nautilus I, I I'm perplexed here I, I'm sure this isn't an Ubuntu decision here this is Nautilus but <laughs> why can't I right click and create a new plain text file or at least do it from the menu 
what I was going to do is now you can actually zip and unzip from inside <laughs> Nautilus, which is a, like a basic feature every file manager should have. But for whatever reason, Nautilus didn't have it. Let me control alt T since I can't actually create a file from the file manager. Let me actually just create one here in the terminal. So I'm going to do touch and I'm going to do file one dot txt and then I'm going to touch file two dot txt. I mean, that's just a better file manager, the terminal anyway, especially compared to Nautilus. But now if I select these, right click on them. Now I have the option to compress and we have compression options, including zip. And well, it looks like the hints are cut off. That could be a VM problem, but I can actually create an archive now. And there I just zipped it. And if I right click on it and extract here you know I'd get the files again actually I'd get a folder with the files in them back to home here yeah I'm just crazy I'm just really perplexed why I couldn't why I had to go to the terminal to touch a new file instead of I don't understand what GNOME is doing with their file manager one last thing I want to check out let me go back to settings because the most important part of every Ubuntu release, especially the LTS releases, is the wallpaper pack. And honestly, the default wallpaper, this jammy jellyfish wallpaper, is amazing. I wouldn't change it. But let's check out the others. Yeah, that's okay. It's a little minimal. And then, of course, you got your standard nature photography. Uh, the, the flower, actually, is really nice. That is a little garish and bright for me. More flowers. And we have this uh, picture here of this path through a field. Actually, that's a that's a really nice wallpaper. I may have to borrow some of these wallpapers. <laughs> yeah, even though I'm not running Ubuntu, I may have to borrow their wallpaper pack. What is this here? Just some lines. Huh. Very minimal, though very dark. That would look great with the light theme this wallpaper if I went to appearance and chose the light theme a light theme against a dark wallpaper would look very nice but the problem is the light theme and the dark theme when I changed the light theme the wallpaper changed back why it's because when we were using the light theme before we were using the jammy jellyfish wallpaper so each light and dark mode they have their own settings and it remembers the settings so it remembers the background I chose or this, so I have to actually choose this for the uh, light mode with the dark wallpaper. Now, if I go back to appearance and choose dark mode, we'll still be using this wallpaper, but I could change it. But if I go back to the light mode, it will always go back to the last wallpaper I was using with the light mode. Now, I actually think that's really neat because uh, most of the time, the wallpapers you use with a light theme and a dark theme will be completely different. Typically, you want dark wallpapers with light themes and light wallpapers with dark themes. So I actually think that is a rather nice touch. And that is uh, thankfully a part of, uh, I think, what the GNOME team is doing. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go back to the default wallpaper. And so, yeah, Ubuntu 2204, I'm really, really impressed with this. Like, I'm really blown away by first of all how much improvement gnome has seen with gnome 42 and i'm really impressed with some of the stuff that the ubuntu team added on top of gnome that gtk theme the light theme and the dark theme that yoru theme looks gorgeous the icon set uh, changing the accent colors how it affects the gtk theme and the icon set and all that's really really nice that's chef's kiss stuff right there overall i think this is a solid release i think this is going to be a big hit for ubuntu and i want to congratulate all the developers for ubuntu and for the gnome team as well for all their hard work i am again i was really genuinely impressed with what i saw today now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I needed to thank the producers of this episode. Devin Gabe James, Maxim, Matt Michael, Mitchell, Paul Scott West, Alan Armor Dragon, Chuck Commander Angry, Dai Yokai, Dylan George Lee, Lennox Ninja, Mike Erjan, Alexander, Peace Arch and Fedora, Polytech, Riala, Teats for Let's, Red Prophet, Steven, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Ubuntu 2204 Jammy Jellyfish, it wouldn't have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. Because I don't have any 
corporate sponsors. It's just me and you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. This might be the best Ubuntu since 1404.